Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use some C-sharp techniques that very very few people know about to effectively implement a brand new feature into the language without actually having to touch the compiler. The feature we're going to be adding is coming from Kotlin and even though very very simple, it is so so much powerful. Not only we're we going to add it, but we're going to make sure it's very very performant. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, just a quick reminder that I will be running my two-day workshop, Introduction to Effective Testing in C-Shop and .NET, in a few conferences this year. For now, these are NDC Minnesota and NDC London, but also NDC Porto and Copenhagen will be announced. So I'm going to put links in the description if you want to speak with your manager or your company and make the trip to any of those locations and spend two days with me learning how you can properly test your C-Sharp and .NET code. I hope to see you there. Now, before I show you the C-Sharp code, I want to show you what feature we're going to be adding. And the feature we're going to be adding is the way you can do for each loops effectively in a range in Kotlin. So in Kotlin, you can do the following. You can say for i in 0 to 10 and you can print or you can use this item in that loop. So if I run this, this will print from 0 to 10. And this, the equivalent of this, would be for var i equals 0 i less or equals in this case to let's say 10, then I++, plus plus, which as you can see is way too verbose and I'm really not a fan of this. And the for each alternative in C-sharp would be something like this, where you say for each var i in enumerable dot range, but then you have to deal with the implications of uh, what this will allocate and how slow it will be. So I'm really not a fan of how C-sharp deals with creating a loop around just a known range of data and this could actually be a slice as well so if i want to say from 5 to 10 i can do that in kotlin so can i with the features i have now in c sharp and without touching the compiler implement this exact feature turns out i can and it's super super interesting so let's go here in c sharp and show you exactly the experience i want to give you so all i want to be able to say is for each var i in 0 to and in this case, and this should print console.writeline from 0 to 10. So console.writeline print from 0 to 10. Now, this might look impossible to you, but watch what I can do. I'm going to go over here and create a new class called extensions. I'm going to make this a static class and I'm going to add a single method here. So public static custom int enumerator, and I'm going to call that get enumerator. And then I'm going to extend what is effectively the type of this, which is a range. So I'm going to say extend the range over here and then return a new custom enumerator with a range passed down. So now I'm going to create my enumerator. Now here's where this gets really, really interesting because in many cases, C Sharp supports duck typing. And this is actually one of those cases. So this will pass for a completely valid enumerator as long as it has some methods and properties in it. So before I implement anything here, if I go back here, you can see now that Rider tells me, oh, you want to import that? And once I do, it detects it as a range and it just says that I'm missing some things. For example, it doesn't implement iEnumerable or iEnumerable of T, nor has the suitable get enumerator method. So now let's go ahead and implement this. So first I'm going to turn this into a ref struct, and then I'm going to add the two methods this needs to be accepted by the compiler. So first I'm going to, of course, add the a constructor so this shuts up, and then I'm going to add the two things, which first is a current location on the enumerator. So int current goes here, and for now I'm just going to return zero. I'm going to implement this properly. And the other thing is the boolean method move next, which basically tell it, hey, there's more data to read, go on. And the moment I add those without implementing or extending anything, this code is now happy. This code is now valid C sharp. And actually, I can even write this like this or like this. Now, if I run this, nothing will happen. But this is where the fun begins, because now I can add the main two components I need, which is a current pointer and then the end so I don't go out of bounds from the loop. So I can say private int current and then private read only int end. And in here I'm going to say current equals range.start.value minus one because I'm going to 
plus plus one in here. So I'm going to start from one value below. And then I'm going to say end equals range dot end dot value. And that's it. Now you might have detected a possible bug here. We're going to fix it in a second. And then current will just point to current. And then in move next, all I'm going to say is current plus plus. And then how do I know if I have more to move to the next thing in the iterator? We'll say current less or equals of end. And that's it. And now look what happens. I can go ahead and change this to zero. And this works from zero to 10. Not only does it work, but I can, of course, omit the zero in the beginning and have it implied. So from the beginning, which is zero to 10, or say, give me a slice from five to 10. And I can have a loop on that, as you can see over here. Now, the biggest problem with this as it is now is that I can technically say, give me from, let's say, five to whatever, and something like this just wouldn't work. So I don't want to support it. And the way to not support it is say something like, if range dot end is from end, then throw new not supported exception. And once I do that, if I run this, this will throw an exception because you cannot go from something to basically, I don't know, endless. It doesn't really make sense. So now just to recap, if I want five to 10, something like this, if I want zero to 10, something like this. Oh, and by the way, you could go completely crazy and do something like this and say for var i in 10. Now, the way this would work is you have to basically agree whether you're inclusive or exclusive of the edges. So is it from 0 to 9? Is it from 1 to 10? Is it from 0 to 10? That's completely up to you. But you totally can or could do that. If, if I turn this from uh, a range to an int and say number, then I could return a new range here and say from zero to that number. And then the code would work. And if I let it run, as you can see, by default, it goes from zero to 10. So these are all ways you can extend it, basically using duct typing, which is secretly supported in these situations. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, OK, Nick, this looks awesome but I don't trust this performance because you're using a for each loop coming from a for loop. And how does that compare? So let's see some numbers. So I brought in the project benchmark.net to allow us to run the following benchmarks, a normal for loop from zero to 10 and our own extended loop from zero to 10. And then I have a fake, just empty method here, just so this doesn't get removed during compile time. And all I'm going to do is mark this as release and then run it. So let's wait and see how the two things compare. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, the normal loop 2.2, the extended loop we wrote 6.8, which, you know, it's three times slower, but there's no allocations. We try to be very efficient with that. So in that context, does this performance difference matter? I would say no, but you can make the argument, well, Nick, for me, it matters. Well, let's see what happens when you actually have bigger sizes of things you're iterating on. I'm going to change this fixed value 10 here and bring a params attribute, which will change the value of this thing in runtime, basically three times one per value. So what this will allow me to do is get an idea of how performance changes over time for bigger sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and run these benchmarks and see what they return now. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see now, the performance difference as the sizes grow completely disappears. So this is something I'm personally very confident to add anywhere in my code to replace this sad thing to something that's pretty, pretty elegant in my opinion. But what do you think? Would you use this? Do you know about those extension points? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe more, click the like, the sharing the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.